Um, switching gears to transportation now, um, I'm a Queens resident, I live in Flushing, I take the 7 train every single day, obviously we're, you know, a block from the 7 train right now, um, and you've talked about how it's overcrowded, a lot of other members of uh, the council, a lot of other uh, lawmakers in general have talked about how it's overcrowded, how do you go about dealing with just in general the larger ridership that you're seeing in these subways, um, it seems like there's a lot of talk about how the MTA capital plan is, is insufficient, but but it seems to me like that that's like a long-term solution. What's the short-term solution to kind of alleviate some of these things? Well, I, I think particularly for my district, but I think there's uh, an overflow uh, into really all of Queens. Uh, when it comes to transportation, uh, the 7 train is a real problem. And uh, because the MTA is controlled by the state and is and authority. Uh, I have found it to be one of the most frustrating agencies to work with in my five and a half years as a city council member. It's hard to make a dent. It's hard uh, because they're not accountable. They just aren't. And, and their capital funding deficit is real. Uh, in the 7 train, in the example of the 7 train, they are actually investing uh, hundreds of millions of dollars but it seems to be making it worse before it gets any better. Uh, so uh, eventually, long term, we may see some slight improvements to the 7 train. But uh, given the population increase in my district and really all over Queens, it's, it, the, the transportation solutions going forward have to go far beyond the 7 train and the MTA. And so, you know, I've proposed uh, several uh, significant uh, ways in which we could alleviate uh, the, the real problem with uh, stuffed trains and crowded platforms. And, and that is a, a drastic expansion of, of the ferry service um, and using the water, which is so close to Long Island City and Astoria. Uh, um, uh, the proximity from those areas uh, to Manhattan is so incredibly close. Uh, we, should, we should expand that as much as we possibly can and make that a viable option uh, for folks, particularly along the water. Um, because those folks are the last ones to get on the 7 train going into Manhattan. So you live in Flushing, someone at Main Street uh, might get a seat on the train. Uh, by the time it rolls through Corona and Jackson Heights and Elmhurst and Woodside and Sunnyside, gets to Vernon Jackson, you can't even get on the train. So those folks in particular uh, need other options, right? Some will be able to get on the 7 train, some won't that ferry service is really important. The other thing is obviously uh, bus rapid transit, select bus service, uh, express lines, uh, new ones that, that, that must be funded and must be created uh, with the, the proposed rezoning uh, in Long Island City, mm -hmm. with the development that's already going on, with the multiple projects that, that are pitched to me almost on a weekly basis. There has got to be uh, that commitment uh, before we can we can approve massive rezonings uh, uh, of anything uh, in Queens, particularly in Western Queens. Um, obviously, we're going to get uh, City Bike. We were just given a presentation moments ago by the Department of Transportation on City Bike coming to Long Island City, uh, in particular. Uh, you know, we're hopeful that that's going to happen uh, by the end of the summer uh, this year. Uh, that was the latest update I just got, and and that can be. Uh, a, a, a solution as well. Uh, and, you know, building a new subway line, which some people have proposed, obviously would take billions of dollars and probably, you know, 50 years. And, and that's going to be a little bit too late uh, for the most, for most of us. So that's not the answer to our problems, right? We can, we can, we can improve the seven, uh, God willing, increase capacity, uh, but it's always going to be a problem. Uh, so we've got to look at other ways. Um, and and to, to really blue sky vision this thing, you know, uh, a bridge, uh, either a pedestrian and, and bicycle bridge from, from Long Island City right to Midtown, that would really alleviate a lot of the issues. Obviously, that's a significant uh, a capital investment, but that's the kind of thinking the city should be doing. Uh, as it thinks about the future, as it particularly focuses on Western Queens. As you know, the mayor has a proposed rezoning for a big part of Long Island City, yeah. and then also is uh, uh, exploring 
development of the Sunnyside Yards, which would, which would add uh, you know, a really substantial number of people, not only to my district, but to, to Western Queens. And, uh, uh, and you know, it's hard to envision all of that happening without all of those really significant uh, uh, investments and, and, and transportation options, uh, because the vast majority of folks work in Manhattan. And, and need to get into Manhattan, uh, and obviously uh, a number in Brooklyn as well. But but uh, if folks can't get to work, mm -hmm. then they're not going to be able to live here. And those neighborhoods that I represent, that today are amazing neighborhoods, um, very popular neighborhoods, increasingly growing, increasingly popular. Um, uh, they won't be popular if you can't get to work. Uh, and 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 good city planning is about making sure that all of these things are in place in addition, of course, to the schools and parks and libraries and the things that folks really need. The, the expansion of transportation, just in transportation in general, it's expensive. Yep. It's very expensive, and it seems to me that there's this constant dance where politicians don't want to talk about the added increased cost that's going to have to come with building all this stuff. You know, as we grow, do you think that there's, there needs to be just a change in mentality? Do you need to be an honest conversation with residents to say, listen, like, you're going to get better subways, you're going to get a bridge that you know, helps you bike across into Manhattan or a pedestrian bridge. All this stuff is going to come with an added cost and you're going to have to accept that you're going to have to pay that. Do you think that we are at a point where we need to start having that conversation and maybe just laying out those specifics more? I, I think we already are, right? I mean, I think the Move New York plan is a part of that. And, and I think uh, you know, the problem, of course, is how we fund transportation and, and the MTA's uh, funding uh, is a mess uh, when it comes to capital. And, and uh, it's, it's deeply underfunded. Now, as you know, the mayor uh, increased uh, the city's uh, contribution to the MTA. Um, and then the MTA then went and asked for you know, another billion dollars on top of the increase that the mayor included. But uh, um, we have to have those conversations, right? Uh, and, and as leaders, we have to be uh, able to have them. And, and so, you know, Move New York is, is interesting in that it, it provokes that discussion and talks about how are we going to fund these things. Uh, some people are reflexively uh, against that plan. And as you know, many elected officials uh, in Queens have come out against that plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not one of them, right? I think that we need to seriously look at these things and we have to have an honest discussion about how we're actually going to fund transportation and, uh, uh, and we should explore all options. And, and uh, uh, we've got to figure out a way uh, with, with federal funding being uh, a problem and, and the state uh, not doing uh, what it should do um, and, and the city as well. And then there are other options as well, but but ab absolutely. But I will say this: uh, of all of those things that we talked about, obviously building a new subway line is is you know just the prohibitively expensive. expensive. Yeah. Uh, a bridge is pretty expensive too. Um, ferry service and bus service uh, far less so, and much more doable uh, in terms of getting people in and out of uh, Midtown Manhattan from Western Queens. That is incredibly doable. We could do that. Um, uh, really as soon as, as the political will is there to do it, uh, you know, from, from City Hall. So uh, I've been pushing for it. I'll continue to push for it. We need to have all of those things. Do you feel trapped by the MTA as a body? Like, for example, ferry service, when they talk about that, that's something that maybe the MTA would run. It would be something where your subway passes work for that as well. Is, is, there, is there an outside the box possibility that you just, the city approaches this from a different way, provides services in transportation services, not you, you know using the MTA because you feel like you are constantly trapped with having to work with the MTA, which you have already said is something that you know, is frustrating for you to work with. Is there an alternative? Well, I think I think uh, there are. I mean, the ferry service is an alternative and doesn't right now have an MTA component. Yeah. I think that uh, cross honoring of of metro cards is something we have all discussed, yeah. right? And and I think that hasn't yet come to fruition, but. Obviously, EDC works with and subsidizes um, the uh, the ferry service. The city will expand it, so uh, that is an option. Look, I think in terms of the city of New York, we should do as many things as possible to improve transportation that does not include the MTA, and that's that's not just a cheap shot at the MTA. They've got their hands full, 
uh, with what they, they operate and run. They've got their challenges. And quite frankly, the city doesn't have uh, sufficient control over the MTA. So uh, in terms of our city, our streets, our constituents going to, to work every day on the 7 train or on the buses, um, uh, we are the ones who hear from our constituents. I hear from my constituents every day on the 7 train, literally every day. Uh, and and it's, it's difficult because the commissioner or the CEO or the president uh, is, is not appointed by the mayor. And, and the city council, um, uh, you know, has certainly some oversight. And, and we do have the MTA come in for hearings. And, you know, we hammer them, of course. But, uh, but ultimately, ultimately, they are accountable to the governor uh, and to the state. And that creates a real problem in terms of accountability and, and getting things done. So uh, uh, I've been a very vocal critic of the MTA, and I know they don't appreciate that. Um, but but uh, someone's got to speak out on behalf of my constituents who every day experience really significant problems on the 7 train. Um, so we've got to do uh, things outside of, of the MTA's world, and we've got to think out of the box when it comes to transportation. Um, and, and the development uh, uh, community and developers who have things envisioned in Long Island City uh, in particular, and the administration, who has a lot of ideas about the future of Long Island City, uh, they've got to come to the table with significant, significant investments in transportation infrastructure, um, or else those things can't ever come to fruition. We'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, Jimmy Van Bramer, the New York City Council Majority Leader, thank you so much for uh, having us in your office and uh, sitting down with us. Thanks for visiting Sunnyside.